Hello, welcome to part 2 of Clinical Physiotherapy MCQ series. Let's move to our sixth question. A 28 year old male patient is sent to clinic with low back pain. You perform modalities to reduce inflammation and pain. The physician suggests that you include Williams exercise to strengthen the patient secondary to the poor posture. Upon postural evaluation, you notice an anterior pelvic tilt of pelvis. Which of the following muscle would you be strengthening with Williams exercise? Option A, abdominal and gluteus maximus. Option B, gluteus medius. Option C, gluteus medius and minimus. Option D, rater spinae. And the answer is Option A, abdominals and gluteus maximus. Explanation to this question is when a patient exhibits poor posture, especially in anterior tilt of pelvis, you would utilize Williams exercise to strengthen the abdominal and gluteus maximus muscles. Now let's move to our seventh question. A patient with diagnosis of complete spinal cord lesion at C4, C5 demonstrate a weak cuff mechanism. Which of the following techniques would most effectively augment with patient's coughing? Option A, manual pushing against the upper abdomen. Option B, positioning the patient in prone. Option C, pursed breathing. Option D, interrupting the expiratory airstream. And the answer is Option A, manual pushing against the upper abdomen. Explanation to this question is in order to cough effectively, the abdominal muscle must contract to expel air forcefully. This patient does not have this ability. Therefore, manual force against the abdomen would mimic the action of the abdominal muscles. The prone position would not assist the cough mechanism in this patient. Both the pursed breathing and interrupting the expiratory air stream would decrease the force of exhalation and decrease cough effectiveness. Now let's move to our eighth question. A 70-year-old female patient reports onset of mid-back pain after working in a garden for several hours. The patient reports constant pain with increase in deep breathing and demonstrate limited thoracic spine aerative range of motion in all planes. The patient has a 40-year history of smoking and long-term use of prednisone. Based on this history, which of the following pathologies is most likely the cause of patient's low back pain? Option A thoracic compression fracture, option B lung cancer, option C coronary artery diseases, option D abdominal aortic aneurysm and the answer is option A thoracic compression fracture. Explanation to this question is the data in the question are risk factors for osteoporosis and possible compression fracture. This patient could have weak bonds due to long-term steroid use, smoking or being postmenstrual. Although lung cancer is likely with a history of smoking, lung cancer is unlikely because of the symptom onset after prolonged flexion and should not cause limited active range of motion. Coronary artery diseases and an abdominal aortic aneurysm would not cause limited active range of motion or pain with deep breathing. The patient history does not increase her likelihood for having an abdominal aortic aneurysm. Now let's move to our ninth question. A patient is recently admitted to hospital emergency room after falling down from stairs at home. This 62-year-old female complains of pain in her left groin and gluteal area. You observe that the left hip is in flexion, attraction and internal rotation. Which of the following is the patient's most likely suffering? Option A, a gluteus maximus strain. Option B, a dislocated hip. Option C, a fractured femoral head. Option D, an adductor muscle strain. And the answer is Option B, a dislocated hip. Explanation to this question is Given the type of fall and the symptom described by the patient, she has most likely suffered from a dislocated hip. Moving to our 10th question, a patient is referred to physical therapy status post below elbow amputation. The patient has a very short below elbow amputation and you need to teach control of her prosthesis. Which of the following moments would you utilize to teach the patient to control her prosthesis? 
ऑप्शन ए शोल्डर फ्लेक्शन ऑप्शन बी स्कैपुलर प्रोट्रैक्शन ऑप्शन सी शोल्डर एक्सटेंशन ऑप्शन डी स्कैपुलर प्रोट्रैक्शन एंड आंसर इज ऑप्शन ए शोल्डर फ्लेक्शन एक्सप्लेनेशन ऑफ दिस क्वेश्चन इज Shoulder flexion is utilized in upper extremity amputee to assist in control of the processes. That's all for today. If you need clarification, check the description box. Give your feedback in the comment box. If you like this MCQ session, do subscribe to this channel for more videos. Thank you.